What's going on YouTube? A question I get asked a lot by friends, family, and people that want free advice is, what's the best cheap laptop I can buy from Staples or Best Buy because I don't want to give you business? And my answer is always the same. Absolutely. Uh -huh. There isn't a single budget consumer laptop that I would recommend for my customers because they all suck. They're all poorly built, unreliable, and use the cheapest parts known to man. The best budget laptop for under $350 that you can buy in 2022 is a used ThinkPad from 2013. Why? Because these laptops were built different. <sighs> I'm built different. And to prove my point, I bought a brand new Dell laptop that, in some alternative universe, was retailed at $519, but on sale for $300. And I bought a used ThinkPad for $250 that also came with a docking station. Now before you smash that dislike button that nobody can see anymore, let me plead my case. The Lenovo ThinkPad T530 was known in the industry as the Lexus LS400 of laptops. Now if you're not a car person, the Lexus LS400 is known as one of the most reliable luxury cars ever built. It used an engine that was approved for aviation use, which is incredibly rare for an automobile, as the engine must be very reliable to be put into a plane. This ThinkPad is also known for its reliability, due to its sturdy design and how easy it is to upgrade. Yes, it's thick with two Cs, but that thickness adds rigidity to the keyboard, and to the screen. These newer ThinkPads are as thin as a New York City crackhead and as fragile as the ego of Donald Trump. What does that mean? Well, on modern ThinkPads, you'll often see marks indented into the LCD from the keyboard because the material of the lid was not as strong, so the keyboard would rub up against the LCD when it was being held or if there was weight on the lid. As you can see here, the T530 has thick plastic on the lid with a rubber foot to stop it from touching the keyboard. This leaves a significant gap between the keyboard and the LCD, which prevents these marks from happening. This sturdiness was such a trademark of the ThinkPad series that Lenovo released a commercial showing a grandma cooking an entire meal on a ThinkPad. She even ran it underwater and put it in the oven. And although the commercial obviously exaggerated on what the ThinkPad could handle, it was indeed water resistant. Lenovo also released a water test comparing an HP EliteBook with the Lenovo ThinkPad. As you can see here, the Lenovo ThinkPad will survive having water poured on the keyboard as the water is set to drain out of these holes that you see here. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, it's sturdy and has a spill-proof keyboard, but is it fast? And well, the answer to that question is yes. It's fast as fuck, boy! <laughs> For 90% of consumers, this computer will do anything that you throw at it. The 7-year-old i7 processor holds its own against the brand new Core i3 that I'll be comparing it against in the Dell laptop. The ThinkPad's RAM can also be upgraded to 16 gigabytes. And it has a dedicated graphics processor, which can stream 1080p video easily. But when it comes to speed, the biggest factor is the speed of the hard drive. This older laptop came with a 500GB mechanical hard drive, and I upgraded it with a 256GB solid-state drive. Now, this machine is fast as fuck. It can take advantage of that fast i7 processor, and the solid-state drive only cost me $40, which brings my total amount spent to less than $300. The seller of this specific laptop also upgraded the LCD panel from the stock 1366 by 768 to a 1920 by 1080 panel. This makes a world of difference, as the original screen is a heaping pile of shit and will burn your retinas to a crisp. If you need something more portable, this might not fit that criteria, but with a lot of people working from home now, this is the perfect budget laptop. But enough about the ThinkPad. Let's look at the brand new Dell laptop that I bought. This Dell laptop I purchased right from Dell.com. It comes with 4GB of RAM, 128GB solid state drive, and an 11th generation i3 processor. The RAM is upgradable to 16GB, and the SSD is NVMe, which is faster than SATA and can still be upgraded. However, the fact it only comes with 4GB of RAM and runs Windows 11 in 2022 should be illegal. My biggest gripe about these newer laptops is the build quality. As you can see here, this laptop flexes harder than Arnold Schwarzenegger at a bodybuilding competition. This is going to cause problems in the long run. The more this bends, 
the more the motherboard bends, the more problems you're going to have. And god forbid this thing ever drops, because you'll be fucked. And as you can see, the keyboard flexes even under the most minimal pressure. Typing on this keyboard feels like you're typing on a pillow. There's absolutely no pushback, and it feels like you're going to break the thing. It's not backlit like the ThinkPad, it's not spill resistant, and it can't be replaced without having to replace the entire top case which it's riveted to. And this repair is such a major pain in the dick, I don't even offer it at my shop. And when it comes to ports, the ThinkPad has a mini display port, a VGA port, two USB 3.0 ports, a USB 2.0 port, an SD card reader, a combo audio port, an optical drive, and an ethernet port. That's a lot of fucking ports. And when you connect the dock, it has a trillion fucking ports. It can also have additional storage if you replace the optical drive with a hard drive. Whereas the Dell laptop only has three USB ports and an HDMI port. And how about that battery? In three years when you need to replace this Dell battery, you have to disassemble the entire bottom case in order to get to it. On the ThinkPad, just slide this one tab and the battery falls right out. Oh, and you can get an extended battery while you're at it. And are you a fan of using the touchpad instead of a mouse? Well, on this Dell, that's gonna suck. For some reason, laptop manufacturers insist on making their trackpads the size of basketball courts, with no dedicated left-click and right-click hardware buttons. Thankfully, the ThinkPad from 2013 has a dedicated left-click and right-click. It also has a ribbed sticker over the trackpad that provides a nice feedback on your finger. And that sticker is replaceable, so when it wears down over time, you just buy a new sticker off Amazon for 10 bucks and slap it on there. It's kind of crazy that a trackpad design from over 10 years ago is still better than most modern laptops. But let's wrap this up. The point I'm trying to make with this video is something brand new is not always better than something used. As consumers, we've been conditioned to always want the newest, fanciest product. And the word used has become a dirty term. But this is not based on fact. I was motivated to make this video because I was sick and tired of customers coming into the store with a budget laptop that needed the smallest repair, but would outweigh the value of the entire device. These laptops were usually owned by people that were financially strapped and didn't have the money to buy something more expensive when they initially got it. And of course, the average consumer doesn't think about repairability when they buy an item, and they think something's going to last just because it's brand new, when that's definitely not the case. It wears you down having to tell an elderly lady on a fixed income that it's going to cost more to repair her keyboard than it is for her to buy another device. If this video helps even one person make a decision that's going to benefit them financially in the long run and save them money so that they can put that towards something else, then it was all worth it. I grew up poor as fuck, and I know the struggle of having to always buy the cheapest shit. It's a vicious cycle, because the cheap shit never lasts meaning you can never save up your money to buy something more expensive that's worth it. And with that said, I appreciate every single one of you watching this, and leave a comment, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future.